Hey everybody, welcome back to Carriage Play Podcast. I am Joe Harris, your co-host. And I am Jacob Harris, Joe's brother, your other co-host. And we talked and we thought the best way to start a podcast should be, what have we been playing? So this is our first segment, what have we been playing? And let's start with you, Joe. What have you been playing? Um, I have recently... Uh, installed the uh, Dragon Quest Builders English demo, uh, booted it up and played for a little bit. Um, I didn't want to get too far into it because I'd already logged something like 30 hours into the Japanese demo uh, m half a year ago where I've made some in insane things uh, in that game. Examples. Oh, well, I, I should say that if anyone who's not familiar, uh, it's kind of a Minecraft-like game uh, with an RPG structure, uh, like a, you know, with a, with a Dragon Quest skin and kind of structure, but with the kind of flexibility of, of breaking down the environment and then recreating it uh, into... Uh, you know, buildings and landmarks. So, you know, with Minecraft, you can get pretty crazy with anything and how much freedom. Uh, from what I've seen of this, it looks a lot more based around trying to keep that Dragon Quest aesthetic and not doing as much crazy things. Can you still have a lot of freedom in how much you can build? I don't think it's quite as free as traditional Minecraft, but it's... Um... I think that it gives you a, a structure, gives you a focus um, to the the things that you create that I that I enjoy a, a whole lot more, and I'm also have been a huge fan of that series for a long time. So like already, it's uh, it, it it already like super appeals to me. Do you think that this could appeal to somebody who isn't familiar with Dragon Warrior? Yes. I kind of think that uh, Dragon Quest, Dragon Warrior is like already like a broad appeal sort of thing, even though like that's only in Japan. I, I think that's just because it hasn't had the, the opportunity to break out, but it's so charming. Like the series as a whole is like so charming and, and, and fun and light. Uh, I kind of feel like it's, it's for everybody, even the... They just don't know it yet. So I, I don't think that would keep anybody from enjoying it. And like it's the from the demo, it, it's so fun uh, just to create stuff. Um, I mean, as evidenced by how popular Minecraft is, but uh, there's there's something of there's something about builders that I like more. Definitely. And that kind of relates to what I've been playing. I've been playing uh, Dragon Quest Seven, the remake on the 3DS that came out in September. Uh, not the, the the remake of the PlayStation One game from 2001, uh, released yes. in uh, North America as Dragon Warrior Seven, and now it's releasing in North America as Dragon Quest Seven. Uh, some sort of subtitle I don't remember. Uh, it came out in Japan quite a few years ago, actually. Uh, this is finally got translated and brought to the United States where Joe and I live. And, uh, you know, I'm, I played Dragon Warrior 7, the original, uh, for quite a long time. I would say like upwards of 60 hours I was in and I sort of felt bogged down at that point. And I ended up putting it down for a while and I never came back. And I liked it, but it felt like too much for me. But now going back and playing the 3DS version, which in a lot of ways is, there's changes in a lot of things, but a lot of the story arcs are have stayed the same. Uh, but for some reason now, maybe just where I am in my life, I have a much greater appreciation for it. And uh, yeah, I'm really digging it. Uh, I'm maybe 
uh, 30 hours in so far, and uh, it just, it's got good vibes, great story, uh, great characters. There's, it's a game that doesn't make you feel like you're on a power trip. You know those kinds of games. You know Skyrim's. You know... Where, where you're the most important you're the most, person. You are the most powerful, most important person in the world. And you, in some ways, are in Dragon Warrior 7. Well, you, people don't, you, you are technically the chosen one. You seven. are the chosen but one. It, that's but that's not why you're there. You're not there for the power trip. But what's, something you were talking about before is that the, the story arcs. And that like something that's different for Dragon Quest 7. And, and a number of the other entries in the series is that uh it's almost episodic is that and like never more so than in dragon quest 7 is that it's a collection of small or relatively small stories and lots every, of them and every town is a story yeah every every town you you uh you come to in this like big world like that is po- populated by uh by characters like they're all written consistently uh, across and uh yeah each each town is a story or in fact multiple stories uh and it, like it's it's really dense and rich uh but because the game itself is so long like the first time i i finished dragon warrior 7 without even doing any extraneous activities at all it took, i like, clocked in 110 hours just to finish the game like that so like a lot of people get bogged down and how like dense and rich it is it's uh it's dragon quest for dragon quest lovers of dragon quest yeah it's the most dragon quest game that ever dragon quest of dragon quest um although i don't think that people should be intimidated by hearing something like that i think i wouldn't say it's if you had all access to every single Dragon Warrior game and you never played one. I don't know if I would recommend starting with 7, but... Right. It, it's the one you would want to work up to. Uh, yeah, and, you know, you you don't just start reading Joseph Heller. You know, you work up to that. Oh, or, yeah. Or, like, if you start Joseph Heller, you read Catch-22 first. And then you, like, work your way towards something happen. That's a... Yeah, you know, As I shouldn't have even referenced that, Joseph Heller. I've never read a, Joseph Heller. That's a deep literary cut we just did. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, yeah, but I'm really liking it. Some of the changes really bug me. Uh, and I Oh, oh between, between the, the, the PlayStation 1 version and the 3DS version. Yes. Uh, some of the changes are just really... The, it, it's very gamey in some ways some of the changes they've made and maybe this just sounds like um oh i'm just snobbish and it every single little tiny thing they altered i hate and that's true to a certain degree but i think some of the changes just are worse um can you give an example one example i want to give is in the original dragon warrior 7 you had a town that you could build not minecraft style build but you would go around the world and you could find these different spots where there would be sort of these little npcs that would appear and you could talk to them and send it back to your town so you, yeah you would recruit refu- refugees from around the world to, to come back to you to the village that you were building yes and depending on the people you sent back whether they were farmers whether they were bartenders whether they were bunny girls or scoundrels, bullies. It would alter the landscape of your town. It would alter the the vibe. The vibe, and that that was just so cool. And in the three DS version, you still build the town, but it, it's not. There isn't that creative freedom. It seems uh, you go and you talk to. There's you'll. It starts out where you're told where to go to find your first NPC. You you send them back. You go talk to that person you sent back, and they tell you where to go find the next one. And then oh. they go tell you where to tell to find the next one. And then that person tells you where to find the next one. And so, so you have like the, the it it appears. 
I haven't done it a lot because I just feel really repulsed by it and it just seems so you don't have like when you meet the next NPC can you say yes or no and but they'll send you to the next one regardless or like they have to come back to your town you can you can send people away too from your town and you can you they don't have to be there but as far as I'm aware it doesn't seem like there's as much freedom and they've added this weird element of the people you're sending back are actually monsters Wait, what? in disguise of humans and they you know and it just and the first building that's been erected has been a bar but it's not just a bar it's some bar connected to a street pass and you know i mean i get that i get having those sort of elements in there but it, it to me it feels like it cheapens it and it makes me it feel like i don't want to do this well, like, to be fair, to really dig deep on the the town building from Dragon Warrior 7 on the PlayStation, you had to be, like, swapping memory cards with other people who were playing to trade people between your towns. Because to, to, to find enough people of a certain sort to create a certain, like, end town, like a, a different, a different, like, kind of town, y- you would almost have to do that. So, like, the street passes may be the modern equivalent. Like, I wasn't a fan of that either. So, I mean, maybe maybe it's true to the original. And, I mean, to me, it, the the new town building stuff, it's just, it's felt very off-putting to me, too. And I don't want to do it. And it, it, it's got this, I don't know, it just got bad vibes. It just got gamey bad vibes to me. And with, the, with the whole game or just the town thing? Just that town. Uh, some other examples, just in the translation. The, you know, the translation isn't technically bad. Uh, it, some changes, just for instance, there's a character in the original mm-hmm. named Gabo. And they changed his name to Rough. You know? Yeah, I'm not. I, I, when you told me that, I'm not a fan of that change. And we've been talking about it uh, since you got the game, and comparing notes. And it, it's one of my favorite games of all time. And any time you're telling me about some of these localization decisions, like I just face palm. It's, it, I, I, yeah. In the in the town, there's a volcano town, and there's this accent written to, into their their uh words that i'm, the, I'm not sure dialect yeah i'm, I'm not sure what it, it's in reference to but they they replace the word something with summit s so something the word something they replace with s-u-m-m-a-t what is that a reference to like what well maybe it's a pun because of the volcano i guess i hate and, it though it's yeah, stupid. I'm not. I'm not a fan. Of, like the, the Dragon Quest games, they don't need that extra flavor. Like they're best told simply. It's like simple and light and fresh and and easy to understand. And that that localization team uh, go kind of nuts with their bizarre accents. And I I don't think it was ever worse than it was on the uh, Dragon Quest Four remake for DS. Was almost unreadable uh for part of the game um it it, it just in this game where i want to go and talk to everybody it it's an active discouragement when i just i have to struggle to try to figure out what is this person even yeah you have to stop and translate everything that's being said yeah it's the i'm yeah not a fan not a fan of that but uh you know i've i've i still play those games i still love them uh, yeah, and I'm re- just... I'm really liking the remake. Uh, you know, there's just some of those nitpicky things. Um, it just, I, I, we can move on. Something I want to just say about Dragon Warrior, though, that I think a lot of people uh, misinterpret is Dragon Warrior is very true to fantasy in sort of what would be now, oh, that's a JRPG trope. You know, oh, that's just... Oh, because, yeah, the series invented the drugs. Yeah, so, but so many games... You know, playing Star Ocean 5 this year, it felt, you know, muddied with some of that. You know, it, it felt... That felt, like, cheap in a way. Like, this kind of fantasy world just felt kind of dumb 
some of those tropes felt like oh that I've seen that before. But in Dragon Warrior, it's so well executed. Oh and yeah, so simple yet refined. You know, it's down to its bare essentials. Right. Yeah. It's it's not like a grim, dark, self serious. It's 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 a fun, light adventure. Um, but there is also a lot of sadness in it. Well, I mean, and I think that's the nice contrast in Dragon Quest that you have, you can have the really, like, really dark moments because you have that light contrast. In Dragon Quest Seven, every town you're going to has tragedy and has death and has people you know, dying. And sort of the the interesting thing with Dragon Warrior Seven is that you're going back to the past and then to the present version of that town. And you're, to, you're going back to the past to res, to, to restore to, the town. To restore the town, and then you visit that town in the, in the present day. And it, yeah. And it's just, you know, it's tragic and emotional when you're, you're in the past and you're seeing these characters, and then you go to the future and you can see sometimes their gravestone. And it's just, that person lived their life and died. Yeah, it, like, that person is not alive anymore. That right. was so charismatic in the past. Yeah, I, yeah, it's a, it's it's a wonderful game, a wonderful story. I'm really looking forward to borrowing your 3ds at some point and playing through the the remake. You know, and and hopefully the the changes aren't so off putting. Um. Okay. Oh, ready to move on? Yeah. Sure. Um, the other thing I've been playing and can have been playing for well over a year and continuously, uh, Metal Gear... Not well over a year. Wait, when did it come out last year? September 1st. Oh, okay, well, it's slightly over a year. Uh, I continue to play, uh, MGS5, The Phantom Pain. I just cannot put that down. Just, it's... that, That game was... A huge disappointment from a uh, Metal Gear uh, lore uh, fan, <laughs> like I was, like Jacob is, like just just a huge fan of the lore going into uh, MGS Five and and being so disappointed. But the game plays so good, like I just well, and it's, it's so <laughs> fun and like easy and uh, well, not easy, but like it's challenging and like the like the controller is an extension of my mind when i'm playing that game it's so good when i was playing metal gear solid 5 a lot and i i can't remember now it's been so long uh what button it is for the binoculars Mm -hmm. but i remember leaving the house and walking someplace and my finger twitched twitched to when i was in. trying to look at something zoomed in yeah you, i was like you were trying to what mark, is that over there you were trying and to mark my, somebody yeah my fingers my fingers twitching yeah <laughs> it's funny that uh like i spent so many so much time in that game faulting the, those big material containers mm-hmm. and then when any time like uh driving through town i see them out in a parking lot mm-hmm. like in my mind like i'm like i gotta go faulting that yeah like Fulton is the the silly balloons that you can attach to anything in Metal Gear, and it sends it up in the sky, and it's retrieved and take back, take taken back to your base. Yeah, uh, for anyone who so, didn't know. So I mean, you're not a gameplay over story kind of guy. You're no, not. No, I'm not, not that guy. You're not saying Metal Gear Solid Five is my favorite Metal Gear because gameplay is king, and it, you're not saying it's your favorite Metal Gear for any reason, but. You're still playing it. Oh yeah, I think it's uh, it's just so comfortable. Like it, like it's 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 such a good game. It's back when I was a teenager, uh, I played Final Fantasy Tactics like this for like three hundred hours of because like I knew those the, like that game and the system so well, and I wasn't like playing the game again and again. I was just like level grinding constantly, just because it was. It felt comfortable, and it the everything in the mechanically worked so well that I I could like zen out while I play it, so go into this like torpor state, uh, and I think that's what keeps bringing me back to MGS Five. Are you listening to podcasts or Spotify while you play it? Yeah, I, I'm listening to Spotify, uh, which is weird because when I played that initially, like 
I had to have headphones on just for like situational awareness as you're like sneaking around. Like you've got it. Like every little sound can make the difference between life and death in that game. <clears throat> um, but like I know that game so well. Don't even need the don't even need the sound. I just like crank up Spotify and just like jam out as I'm like you know trank tranking out every single guy in a five mile radius and faultening everything and mm-hmm. I <laughs> with that game there's these you you take a base and then uh I always feel like the Grinch yeah uh, in, yeah. in that scene where the Grinch is like picking all, every single like little bit of anything from the Whoville mm-hmm. is like as I like just everything everything that's not take like you know is you know everything that you can and yeah. anything that's not bolted down it's like it, that's going back to my base mm-hmm. yeah it's yeah i i should be moving on because i've seen everything that game has to offer but i just keep coming back uh before we move on to our next segment i just want to take a, a moment to just make sure that we correct something that we're that we say a lot like and um we need to be watching that <laughs> oh i thought have 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 I been saying it a lot? You said like a lot. Oh, God that. damn it. Uh, we're working on it. We're trying. Yes. We're trying to stop. Okay, yeah. It's I, just a bad habit. Yeah, for sure. Um, Let's move on to our next oh, segment. Oh, yeah. The next segment is uh, as we're approaching the end of the year. I mean, you know, we're getting there. Uh, it's the fall. It's October. Uh, yeah, just now. Um, our... Uh, we're going to discuss our game of the year so far, uh, based on uh, like games that are of our interest and that we've played this year. Yeah. So, do you want to kick off? What's a, what's our first uh, nominee so far? Our first talking point. Um, well, like a game that we both played and enjoyed, uh, Uncharted Four. Yep, uh, Uncharted Four uh, came out in uh, I can't remember which month May. And, yeah, I mean, it was a great, great Uncharted. I think we maybe talked about this before. I can't remember. But uh, Uncharted 4 was just this, it really took the series to this a lot more grounded level. Uh, a lot of people call it a walking simulator as trying to insult it in some sort of way. But I, I thought those were the best best parts of that game. You know, I it, it took... This character, Drake, and granted, Uncharted 1 through 3 are also great, and I think people sort of don't give them enough credit, but Uncharted 4 really let us see into the the life of Nathan Drake and really gave him a lot more... Um, yeah, he's more well-rounded, I think. Yeah, and uh, it, introduced, it introduced characters that fit really well that they didn't feel tacked on and it just felt real and emotional uh yeah for sure sam um, being the example i'm talking yeah about. um long lost brother long lost brother um yeah i uh you know one of the things that like i i, I think is probably my favorite uncharted game um but i like mechanically like and the thing is it's like because it because it's doing so many things that Metal Gear Solid Five does, mm-hmm. and but not as well. I'm infuriated, uh, like sneaking and shooting in Uncharted Four because it's it's not it's not as tight and refined, and it doesn't have to be because it you're not there for that. You're there for this action roller coaster, emotional sort of drama. Uh, and, but like, I just, in like super long shootouts, I was infuriated. Uh, uh, you know, I had played Uncharted 4 before Joe, and I had told him going into it, play the game on easy. Uh, and because I struggled with a lot of the same things, um, I really don't like the shooting of that game. I really don't like shooting dudes. people, dudes. Uh, and I don't want to say I don't like the gameplay because I really love the lasso. I love the rope. I love some of the different climbing things. 
and those are interesting and fun and they match what your character should be doing and feeling but shooting wave after wave of dudes just doesn't or do it for me anymore somewhat crummy sneak controls you know well what i don't understand is that same team had worked on the last of us which has way better stealth yeah uh i don't know how you mess that up um but i mean still i i i, I think certainly it, one of the front runners so far this year for me uh yeah i mean i think that not to spoil anything that's probably at at this point in time my goatee so far but something that's kind of surprised me uh at the time when i beat uncharted 4 i thought this is my favorite naughty dog game i like this better than the last of us and with a little bit of distance i agree i i think i still prefer the last of us yeah and as as time goes on it the i forget more about uncharted 4 and remember more of the last of us i still think about the last of us on a regular basis and uncharted 4 sort of falls back in my mind you know it's oh yeah that's it's awesome but i feel with distance i forget more of it um yeah i popped it in to play a little bit not that long ago and i was surprised by a lot of the things i'd forgotten it's like oh wow that's that's really amazing and it's I don't know what it is about it that it does. It's not retaining, or it's not staying in my mind quite as long. Yeah, uh, and I don't know if that's me or if that's the game. Um, so let's move on to our next uh, possible one, I guess. Uh, I think just another big one would be, you know, Dark Souls Three, just for a lot of people. Oh yeah, uh, and we both played and finished that game uh, yeah. earlier this year. Yeah, we both finished it. I, uh, you know, Dark Souls three, uh, kind of like in Shadow Four in a lot of ways, where just like man, I don't, I don't think about Dark Souls three anymore. It's just not a game that I ever care to go back and play. It's not a game that I think about. Oh, that was so great. Even in the, even in the, the time though, I didn't think Dark Souls three was all that. Oh, I, I liked it when I was playing it. Um, but it seemed, uh. Like, even when I was playing it, it seemed rough around the edges. And, I mean, the, those games are, are prone to being kind of rough around the edges. But I was so in love with Bloodborne last year, which is so tight. Like, it's so tightly designed, and like, from visually and mechanically. And it's... it's I think Bloodborne has a better aesthetic and tone. Right. And I I think... Mood. It, you, you, and I think it, it, it plays better and it has a... Yeah, a much more concise sort of story and world, uh, and it's I the true evolution of where I think those games need to go. And to me, Dark Souls Three, even though like I really liked it, felt like a a step back. Yeah, um, I still I still liked it. Like it's still I mean, a front runner for me. Yeah, I mean I, I liked it, but to me it, it just. I don't understand why some some people act like it is the best Souls game. And I might get, you know, if you're one of those people, I mean, you know, good, you know, cool. I, I'm not saying you're an idiot. I'm just saying I don't personally think so. I, I think it's what you come to games for. And I think the one, like, valid criticism you could level at Bloodborne is that you can't really customize your character to the same degree you could in other souls games like you yeah if you were really into vastly different character builds bloodborne's not going to do it for you and dark souls 3 will um but i also got a question what you know why what is the value of just character builds um i mean the replayability but i mean i I, I don't get that. Like, I mean, I'm I'm not one of those people who plays soul games again and again. Like, no, I know some people do, and I, you know, <laughs> like I you know, there's some people who oh I hate they're so intimidated by souls they're not ever gonna play it, and there's some people who that's all they play. You know, they play souls games over and over and over, and I'm neither one. I I enjoy them. I get excited about them. I 
playing through once and then I'm done. You know, right. Bloodborne I actually played through twice, but I uh, yeah, I played through Bloodborne twice, uh which surprised even me because yeah. Uh but let's uh you pick the next one, Joe. Um I am still really in love with this game that has seemed to have been almost completely forgotten. <laughs> Uh, Firewatch. Yeah. Uh, from February? Or was it January? February, I think. Um, God, I, like, I really like that game. And people have a problem with the ending, and I think it works great. But I'm, I'm not going to spoil anything, but no. it's... I was also a big fan of Gone Home. And it's not the it's not the same team, but they're... They, they're people who know and cooperate the, the, between... Fulbright and um, Campo Santo um, from the Idle Thumbs podcast, uh, you know. So there's there's some shared DNA or ideas at least between Gone Home and Firewatch. And this to me, Firewatch seems like Gone Home too. Like that the the yeah like growing and expanding the ideas from Gone Home. Um, and there's uh, yeah, still I, room to grow from that. Oh, uh, sure, for sure. You know, I think that one of the things about Firewatch that I would have really liked, and I'm just going to give a just a quick uh, summary here. Uh, Firewatch it skips a lot of days. You just it goes to the main story beats. There you don't spend any days just you exploring with no objective. So yeah, the, and the... I think I don't think we need to explain really too much more of that. But I just think that that game would have been... If you could have lived the entire summer on the Firewatch instead of the, 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 the story leading you by the nose by skipping huge chunks of time to, to lead you to the next story beat. And I think a lot of people would have been not in love with that. They would have just wanted the story beats. But, you know, to just for someone who is likes creating things, I just... I try to create something that's just really, really just meaty and, de you know, you wouldn't have had to go to that much more work just to have more days just to explore, just to right. do nothing, days of doing nothing. I was I was really in love with the idea of just persisting in that place, spending a summer on this, this tower and in the, the area around it in, um, around Yellowstone, and... Uh, just to spend the summer there and being bummed out every time that game skipped ahead. Uh, yeah. So like in, like if they, I think if they'd given everything its its own weight, uh, persona style, like you know, persona style, like you you actually go through every day, uh, would have, uh, would it be like practically my my perfect game. Joe and I both have this thing where we think that. 99% of games would benefit from having Persona 4 or 3 style social links. Oh, totally. Absolutely. 100% always. Um, uh, you know, I think we don't need to talk about Dragon World Quest 7. We've already talked about that a little bit. Yeah, yeah also a front runner. Also a front runner. Uh, something that uh, we could talk about No Man's Sky. Okay, so the, yeah, let's let's uh, move on to games that uh, Jacob and I have played, but uh, aren't making this game of the year so far list. And you know, with No Man's Sky, it's not a game that Joe and I hate. We're not uh, offended by No Man's Sky. We're not, you know, we we don't really, we just we're really, on, we don't have an opinion either way. Really, it's like it's not. It's not great. It's kind of boring. It's you know it, it it's just there, right? And like it it has a lot of uh, a lot of venom uh, from people online, and like some of it deserved, and a lot of it I don't think quite as deserved. Um, but like it, it's a game I like. It's a game like I'll pop in and play for a little bit. Um, uh, I it's a Spotify game. Yeah, so you listen to Spotify and just chill. Um, it, it's all right. Uh, I don't think it's, it's 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 certainly not one of my front runners for the game of the year so far. No, I I think every single game we've talked about so far, I would put ahead of it. Yes. Uh, another kind of somewhat not disappointing, I guess in quotes, uh, game would be Star Ocean Five. 
uh, I mean, we didn't have high expectations for it. And it's it's not like we are offended by it either. I mean, it's cool that Square Enix is doing that, uh, making Star Ocean 5, that they made that. Um, um, well, I think uh, people... Well, I wasn't disappointed. No. Um, it was totally a Star Ocean game. And I think a lot of... I see a lot of uh, chatter online talking about like the high watermark of the series being to like most people online star ocean 3 which is uh a game that i liked but is really dumb (laughs) really really kind of a dumb crummy game Mm -hmm. and star ocean 5 is pretty much in line with that the high watermark of the series uh which is kind of a dumb crummy game yeah um so I mean I'm I'm not disappointed. It it was it was kind of a fun distraction. It, it had some character beats that I kind of liked, but it was true true to form. Mm-hmm. Just just a really dumb game. I guess I could say why I'm disappointed is I had never played a Star Ocean before. Uh, this is my first Star Ocean, and I kind of thought, oh well, I know it's kind of a more Tales of esque series. It is very like. Tale, the Tales of series. But I don't like it as well as Tales of, and Tales of isn't even a series I particularly like. I think Tales of, like, they come out more consistently, and they're funner. Yeah, the like, characters not mechanically are mechanically fun. funner. Yeah, the, the characters are are fun and light and bubbly, and it's like watching an anime. Yeah, where Stars and Five felt... A lot of the characters felt very one-note. You know, they just kind of... Oh, is this the, uh, what character is your favorite? Oh, boring anime character, you know? A lot of archetypes. I mean, Tales, that's what Tales of deals with, or deals in, trades on, you know, but they do it better, I think. Um, I, I've always thought that the Star Ocean series has always sort of missed the point because it's fundamentally, it, it, it's supposed to take place in space like a like a star trek japanese role-playing game but they always instantly mire you on some backwater planet that looks and in every regard exactly like a pat fantasy world Mm -hmm. with magic and castles and swords and dragons and it's why you have let your imagination like go nuts but no it's always the same same just rote fantasy stuff and the, it always seemed like a missed opportunity to me and star ocean 5 continues that tradition yeah uh another kind of disappointing game that probably isn't one of my personal front runners for goatee so far is ratchet and clank uh remake. playstation 4 remake yeah uh, and it, it just sort of, Joe and I have been big Ratchet fans since the beginning, and the the series was at its very best during the PS3 generation with the Future Trilogy, and uh, yeah, this this new one, it would it was one that felt good in the moment, but after it was over, it just felt so uh, light. It was Ratchet light with kind of, I didn't like the interpretations of ratchet and the interpretations of quark in it i right. just thought that it felt it felt you could feel the movie tie-in aspect of it right that it yeah and i think that's how it suffered it suffered the most is that it had it it couldn't it couldn't be a full game it had to be an accompaniment accompaniment to a children's movie um instead of standing on its own and that's when I was playing it, what kept coming back again, it's like you wouldn't get story beats. And like, you're not necessarily there in a Ratchet game for its compelling story, but in the Future Trilogy, it they started doing that really well. And this is a gigantic step back. Yeah, and it, it makes me, just for instance, Ratchet, the main character... Uh, just in this new one, there was basically no character at all. I mean, just starry-eyed kid, I guess, where, but there was no room to grow. There was no flaws. It was him and Clank 
got along great. There was no conflict and struggle with the, you know, what, and Quark awkwardly narrating and saying unfunny things over the top of everything you do. Oh, yeah, and he sounded like he's narrating inside of a tin can. Yeah. Like, I don't know what was happening in the studio that Rocket day. Rocket jumped on the box. Uh, um, and I, the, the game wasn't even... Uh, was a huge step back mechanically from A Crack in Time from 2009. Yeah. Uh, which was so mechanically rich and dense. And this seemed like they retreated back uh, some. I mean, you know, maybe they looked at the numbers. I think A Crack in Time didn't sell particularly well, despite I that pretty much being the best Ratchet game. Yeah. It was just kind of disappointing. Uh, things that have come out this year that we haven't played but would like to play, and let's just kind of blast through these because we don't have a lot to say. Uh, Abzu? Yes, I so want to play this. Uh, huge fan of Journey, and uh, I know this isn't that game company, but it it is. it does share uh, some creative people, uh, and that's exciting, and it seems like people like it, and it looks amazing. I am Setsuna. Uh, yeah, uh, it looks, it looks like it could be good or boring. I've kind of saved it for thinking, oh, over Christmas break, I'll get it. Oh, because it's snowy. Yeah, we, Joe and I live in, um. The mountains. The mountains. It's it's cold here. Snowy. Snowy. Not yet, it's not snowy yet, but, uh, inside. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Also, yeah, uh, I really like Limbo. This Limbo too. I'm all for that. Yeah, it's just one of those things that we just haven't had time to really get it and play it. Yeah, you know, partially it's time, partially it's like financial stuff. Just you know, when you're paying rent or whatever, like certain things take priority, and yeah. you can't get every game you want. Uh, and then this last one's kind of an obscure one. It came out. <laughs> well, what? Uh, it's just one that nobody talks about anymore. It came out the same day as Firewatch, which is Unravel, with little Yarny Man. Yeah, it. Then the game looks beautiful. Yeah, I played the demo. Uh, just kind of one of those things where we got Firewatch instead and just thought... Yeah, and then eh, other and then, things happen. And yeah, and then... At, at some point, I want to. Yeah, it'd be good. Maybe free. Maybe it'll be free one day. Uh, so let's move on to just really quickly the uh, rest of the year. What's coming out rest of the year? Possible goody talk commentary stuff. So... Uh, we've met previously mentioned this, uh, but Dragon Quest Builders is coming out this month in October. Uh, I don't remember the exact date, but oh, yeah, it's this month, I think. Yeah. Um, did you say that? Yeah. Oops. Um, yeah, I, I think that could very easily be the game I spend the most time with this year. I'm will it very win your game of the year? Uh, I mean, it it has a shot. I okay. mean, already from the demo, I might like it better than the rest of these games. All right, and I'm I'm very excited too. Uh, World of Final Fantasy. Um, I have, like, I am so looking forward to playing that, but I have no doubt that that's going to be exceptionally dumb. It's it's going to be, yeah. But I, it's kind of what I always wanted out of Kingdom Hearts, and I've talked to Jacob endlessly anytime kingdom hearts comes up in the video game news is that what a missed opportunity that is for square enix you to just take the idea of kingdom Hearts uh jumping between these different disney worlds is like cut disney out of the equation whoa like, whoa well, people are gonna hate that hate you hearing that 90 percent of disney stuff is is really lame 90 percent uh you know just whereas jump between different can you still Prop- say that after they own Marvel and uh, Star Wars? But th- those aren't part of Kingdom Hearts. Might be. That would make it more interesting. But the um, uh, the the idea of like having jumping between worlds and jumping between these different Square Enix properties, like jump between Dragon Quest and Final Fantasy and Chrono Trigger and Xenogears and in the Mana series and Seiken Dentets. Star um, Ocean. Star Ocean. Um, that's, that sounds cool. And like, World of Final Fantasy seems like a, like a step in 
toward that kind of thing. And, like, I'm not immune to nostalgia and, you know, fan service. I'm, I, I would like to see chippy versions of <laughs> characters that I like, you know, doing. The World of Final Fantasy, Joe, will have a story better than Final Fantasy VI's, Final Fantasy VII's, and Final Fantasy X's combined. Uh, is that, is it will be a, better than that. <laughs> are you making fun of some quote you read on NeoGAF? Uh, no, I don't know. That's uh, I remember something about someone saying it was going to be better than Final Fantasy VI, the story, but I don't, I don't know. I, I actually something about that seems vaguely familiar. Yeah, that's crazy. That's not going to happen. It's going. I I have no doubt it's going to be dumb, like face palm dumb. Yeah, I'm still excited though. I am too. It looks. It's cool. not going to win my game of the year, no matter what though. I don't know. I, I think if it has the right amount of charm, if it doesn't go too heavy on like melodrama, which True. it looks like it might, but it, it it could. There will be two death monologues in World of Final Fantasy. Oh, at least. <laughs> uh, let's see. The Last Guardian is coming out this year. Got delayed. What well, maybe? It might be coming out this year. Oh, it gets... unless it gets delayed again. If it gets delayed, it won't be. But. You know, what's weird is that they delayed it exactly in the same, like, time frame of Gravity Rush 2. So, to Sony Computer Entertainment Japan. Yeah. So, like, properties in the same... Like, week. Within, yeah, with, within a week. That's That seems weird. That makes, that makes me think that one of them, at least, is going to get delayed out of this year. So, The Last Guardian, clearly one of our more anticipated games... I expect to love The Last Guardian. I'm not going in with super crazy expectations. I'm I don't expect that to like it more than I like Shadow of the Colossus. Yeah, I think from the moment it was announced, even with the leak, the leaked trailer mm-hmm. saw that it it's it's Eco 2. It's not Shadow of the Colossus 2. And True. I think going in with that in mind like, I don't think I'm going to wind up disappointed. No. I'm... I think that The Last Guardian has a high chance that it could be my game of the year if it comes out this year. Yeah. I mean, it's... Like... I think it has the chance of being the best game of this year. Yeah. I mean, I, I would... Maybe not your favorite game, but the y- best. Yes. Um... I, I can't imagine that team really dropping the ball, but they've only made two games before. And, and it's this been one's a, taken and, a long time. And it's been a decade, so <laughs> fingers crossed. Uh, you mentioned Gravity Rush 2. Um, yeah, I mean, I played the first Gravity Rush and got the Platinum on the Vita. Uh, humble brag there, but... Uh, <laughs> you know, I like Gravity Rush 1. I, I would like to see Gravity Rush 2 expand more on towns and NPCs. It doesn't look like that's what it's going to do, though. But I, I, I think you're right. Like I love those mechanics from the first Gravity Rush, but you need to, to dig a little deeper into the world you're inhabiting. It, because in the original Gravity Rush, it was all veneer. It was just like a place for you to do the game mechanics mm-hmm. uh, instead of a, like a place that you felt like you were legitimately persisting in. I think they need to bring a little bit more role-playing game into it. You know, I think they need to have Persona social links in it. For sure. Like <laughs> every, 99% of all other games. Uh, but I'm not ready to write it off yet. Everything no. I've seen, like, like it's... If it's just more gravity rush and like super pretty, like that's enough for me. Yeah, but I, I mean, I'm I'm gonna get gravity rush too. Right. So, but going from being a, a good game to greatest of all time kind of thing, it's like it's it's close enough. If if they pushed it a little harder, mm-hmm. they could push through to that kind of level. I mean, Gravity Rush One is already my favorite superhero game. Yeah, I yeah, mine too. Yeah, it feels too good to fly you know that that or, game that yeah game gets flying yeah and like the the sense of weight and momentum like no other game has captured that in that way and like there are other 
good superhero games, you know, the Arkham games or Infamous. The Order. Uh, what? The Order 1886. It's a superhero game? Yeah. Uh, Galahad is basically a superhero. I mean, every video game protagonist no, is kind of... No, that story is a superhero story, Joe. I I guess Victorian superheroes. Yes. Okay. All right. I mean, it's just a third-person shooter. <laughs> okay, but um, yeah, Gravity Rush Two. Uh, excited. Um, and then the big one that uh, I'm sure a lot of people hate and a lot of people will love. The the internet is determined to hate. I think. Yeah. Uh, uh, Final Fantasy Fifteen. And probably my most excited game out of all of these, actually. Right. Yeah, it's it's a big question mark. Uh, I played a lot of Episode Dusuke, the demo from... How long ago was that? Last March, I think. Okay, yeah, and it's... Uh, man, I played a lot of that. Got all of the characters to level 99. It was... Spent a lot of time on that demo. Loved it to bits. I'm kind of of the opinion that if they just give me more of that. But I, uh, then that new demo, the Platinum demo had come out. Yeah. Uh, and sort of made me think that maybe they don't know what they're doing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so it's a question mark, but I'm, I'm the most excited for Final Fantasy fifteen. Yeah, by far me too. I mean, Final Fantasy fifteen. it just... It looks just so good. And I'm sure it's... I think there's going to be a lot of things I'm going to hate about Final <laughs> Fantasy XV. But I, I'm... I, this... Final Fantasy XV is the biggest event of the year. Yeah. And I think I want to applaud Square Enix for that. They... They're able to take Final Fantasy and still make the new entry be an event. Right. They're yeah. treating Final Fantasy XV like an event. Right. And by, uh, you, by having an event earlier this year just to announce the release date, that's that's saying this game is a big deal. Pay right. attention. Right. And I mean, did. maybe maybe a little misguided when they had to delay it. Well, a little bit. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, it's... it's Square Enix going toe to toe with big Western games, and 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 in my mind, looking not not just visually, but just that experience looks richer and more interesting to me than Grand Theft Auto, than another Watch Dogs, than another Assassin's Creed. Yeah, you know, I hope that there's towers. Uh, uh. Anyway, uh, God, dude, please no. <laughs> like you said that, and then suddenly he's like, "Oh no, that can't." Wait, what if there's tower? <laughs> no. Hunt this many animals to get this many skins to craft this many spears to do this. Oh God, I just this unlocks up. two of these types of tasks. One of this type of task and I, three of this type of task. I, I just threw up in my mouth. <laughs> Um, yeah, but that's kind of, as for us, uh, as huge nerds, are the games we're looking forward to for the rest of the year. Uh, yeah, we don't care about shooters. Nope. Screw you, Battlefield 1. <laughs> <laughs> Why <laughs> Battlefield 1 specifically? I don't know, I just... Titanfall 2, Call of Duty, interchange it with any... Watch Dogs 2, even. You yeah. know, change it with any of those. Yeah. I don't care about you. Actually, I, like, I, I'm curious if Watch Dogs 2 is the Assassin's Creed 2 of they've taken a boring original game and then spun it up enough to be interesting to everybody. Uh, yeah, not everybody. Well, I mean, to, I mean, <laughs> not me. <laughs> Like, Assassin's Creed 2 was kind of ubiquitously loved. Yeah, I don't think that Watch Dogs 2 will get that, but... I mean, I, I it, it, it still looks boring to me. Um, yeah. Uh, so, do you want to move on to our next segment? Okay, um, we just 
experimental segment uh, where Jacob and I talk about like other media we're consuming lately. So uh, one of the things that I've been listening to lately has been uh, Pink Floyd. Uh, I have kind of just, uh, you know, I grew up sort of a music listening family uh, <laughs> with uh, as, a lot. as opposed to those non music listening families. Yeah, you know, um, uh, but a lot more music like ACDC, Guns N' Roses. Uh, yeah, like, a lot of more rock music. But and, and Jacob's a younger guy, so Pink Floyd is is pretty alien. I mean, he, yeah. it was way before my time, and I'm way super old balls. So you know, I kind of I never listened to Pink Floyd though. That was kind of a, a either a blind spot or something. They're just we don't like Dad never got a lot of Pink Floyd albums. He got you know Led Zeppelin albums, ACDC albums, Queen albums, no Pink Floyd albums. Right. And I started listening to Pink Floyd when I was playing No Man's Sky. Actually, that's a great combo, by the way. And really liking it. Uh, I really like it a lot more than Led Zeppelin. And I don't mean just to compare. I'm just like, oh, what's better than this? This is worse than this. But, but I think you're right that they occupy this, the, the same kind of spaces as kind of artsy, artsy rock. Yeah. Uh, and I think... I, I think Pink Floyd, the Led Zeppelin's ex- being so experimental doesn't so seldom pays off the way it does for Pink Floyd. Yeah, and I'm I'm really digging that. I'm really digging Pink Floyd a lot. Joe and I watched uh, Deadpool. Oh yeah, so with uh, Hastings going out of business, uh, my where home... where we live at least, I don't know if everywhere. Oh, isn't the corporation just... I don't know. Okay, well, the... Hastings in our town is going out of business. And so, like, they're liquidating everything, and my wife had picked up Deadpool on Deadpool on Blu-ray, uh, and we'd never seen it before, so we are kind of late to the party there. Um, I was pleasantly surprised. Yeah, I really liked it. Joe brought it over, and we watched it together, and uh, uh, I was impressed. I Deadpool wasn't a character that... I mean, I was familiar with him. I knew the games with Deadpool, with Nolan North. Uh, and I just didn't have a lot of respect for him. I didn't understand what he was. I thought that Deadpool always was just this thing in a red suit. I didn't even know that he was a character underneath that. And I was impressed how that movie took this character I did not know and made me care and know exactly who this character was and gave reason for every single one of his actions and motivations and, and it was fun and funny and self and it could do all of those things while telling this good story uh, underneath it all and i think a lot of self-referential humor movies get lost in the gag mm-hmm. and and deadpool keeps the gag going but not to the detriment of its of its story I or thought, its characters i i mean i would say that it's my favorite comic book movie uh i'm not just i'm not very familiar with movies i can't get into the specifics of all oh, well, the cinematography of it or whatever uh i just i really liked it though it kind of connected with me in this interesting way where yeah i just really liked those characters and the cast and i thought it was good acting and yeah i yeah one of my favorite uh, Marvel movie, uh, I I like it better than Guardians of the Galaxy, which was my previous favorite Marvel Marvel movie. Yeah, uh, well, <clears throat> that's kind of getting back into the well. This is better than this, and this is. Oh worse no, than that. I mean, I, I guess I don't want to get too deeply mired in that, but I just liked it that much that like, whoa, this is this is king now. Um, Great soundtrack. Yeah, fantastic. I'm really impressed. Uh, and you know, just real quick, just to point out how old I am. Uh, my history with the character, uh, like I knew the character from the New Mutants, when he was created by uh, uh, Louis uh, Simonson and Rob Liefeld, you know, back in the late eighties. And it seems like a humble brag that I'm old. No, it's not that you're old; it's that you're bragging about. Yeah, I was there first. I but... was there at the beginning. Well, no, it's that that the fun character you see in the movie didn't exist at the beginning. Deadpool was just a henchman you know, just kind of there, uh, like not 
I mean, wisecracking, but not... He wasn't the character. Like, that was much, much later. Even, at, like, I think a lot of that was cemented after I stopped collecting comic books. Uh, the the persona of that character. So, but I, I remember when nobody gave a crap about that character and didn't have a, a reason to. And now it's, you know, biggest rated R movie ever. You know, grossing, you know, more people care about Deadpool than like major other major superheroes like that's mm-hmm. crazy to me um oh something uh uh lately i'd picked up the uh collection of uh, junji ito's manga uh uzumaki um yeah uh i i've never read a horror manga before or anything by junji ito like i was aware of his place as like a really prominent horror manga manga author but i didn't really know what that was like and this why did you pick this up now oh well i was listening to uh another podcast um uh bonfire side chat where they talk about um dark souls and uh or the dark souls games and their influences uh and uzumaki came up in, as it as it influenced uh, Bloodborne. Uh, and as they were talking about it, I was like, man, I, I've got to see what this is about. And uh, picked up Uzumaki, and I'm very impressed. It is very unsettling, very weird. Yeah, Joe's trying to get me to read it, but I didn't get a chance to get it from him. And then uh, he ended up lending it to our sister. So Yeah, who knows if she'll read it or not. And who We'll never, it's gone now. It's gone forever. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, you, you should, because it is totally something you would, you would vibe with, I think, or gel with. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I was very impressed. Oh, and, um, I just had finished, uh, reading a, uh, a, a book, Shadow of the Wind, and it's kind of, kind of bizarre it's uh released 2001 i think but it's about um it's a thriller mystery uh uh, in the wake of world war ii in barcelona and uh i i don't didn't know a whole lot about barcelona um other than that it was in spain and i know just it's just great book a great period piece uh, would recommend, uh, I mean, a little saccharine, surprisingly, uh, but, but it's really beautifully written. Uh, uh, I, I had, didn't, had never heard of the author, had never heard of the book and looked it up on Wikipedia. I guess it's one of the best selling books ever. Oh, uh, like 15... why, what made you start reading it? Oh, uh, Krista had recommended it. Uh, my wife, uh, it was on her bookshelf and like, I've just. I've gone through every book that I have on my bookshelf, so I've been going through her bookshelves, mm-hmm. uh, just reading everything she's got, and then um, I got some Hank the Cow Dogs if you want to read. <laughs> That's about as far as my reading goes. Um, yeah, it's uh, she'd recommended it, uh, and she knew that I'd like it, and I did. Uh, uh, I've been watching uh, with my mom <laughs> this series called Paul Dark which is a British show. Uh, it's actually pretty... It's really good. Uh, I know nothing about this. What is this? So it's based on a book uh, or a series of books. I don't know. Um, basically, it's about this this uh, guy who... He's sort of this... He's born into a somewhat prestigious family in Britain. But he he sort of also was very associated with the workers of the, of these mines and he would work in the mine and he's this laborer and he ended up going to fight in the war with America during the revolution. Oh, okay. For some, for some reason I didn't place the period in my mind. I was like, <laughs> like in, I'm thinking industrial or like post industrial revolution. And then you were talking about going to war with America. It's like, Wait, wait, record scratch? No, 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 no. Yeah, so it takes place in the 1700s. Okay. And he comes back, the show starts when he comes back from the war, and his whole life back home is basically in shambles. And 
it's sort of him building it back up well then also trying to fight against corruption in this sort of weird way and uh anyway me and my mom had watched season one together and season two just started up uh the premiere of season two was last sunday uh september 25th or something like that uh but yeah it's really good i really like pole dark uh <laughs> The cover of it, we're watching it on Amazon Instant Video, and the cover of it is this, it look, it's this like Fabio-looking guy with his hair blown back. And the oh, wind. like the, the, the thumbnail. They yeah, the to... little thumbnail of it is just this, yeah, he's like this model he's posed on the beach, and uh, my mom was like, let's watch that one. And I said, why? And she goes, I don't know, I like the cover. <laughs> it's oh. like, all right. Oh, mom. <laughs> Poor mom. Um, oh, and... How uh, much are Fabio deck guys? Uh, just last night, um, again, hasten to go out of business. Many stops there as the the deals get better to pick up movies. Um, my, my wife had picked up Last Action Hero, which is uh, a movie that I had seen as a kid uh, and really liked. Uh, and she had never seen. And, and so we sat down to watch it. And I was a little afraid that it I wouldn't think it was very good. I've started to start rewatch movies that I'd seen as a kid that I liked only to discover that they're not very good. Um, and I thought that this might be another one of those movies, but I don't know. It, I kind of, kind of still holds up as a big dumb action movie as a parody of big dumb action movies. Well, kind of celebrating big dumb action movies. Uh, and it was fun and cool and I think the, uh, we'd, we're, she and I were talking about it last night. It, it's sort of what the, uh, what um, Kung Fury uh, would be the modern equivalent. Although I, I think Last Action Hero might do that kind of thing better. Uh, the the is it, over the top action parody. Is it as good as Pacific Rim? No, like Pacific Rim is really good. Like <laughs> Last Action Hero is mm-hmm. is a is a good movie that I like because it reminds me of being young, and that era of of Arnold Schwarzenegger action movies. Mm-hmm. Uh, that I mean, I it's they don't really make anymore except those expendable movies that look really crummy. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, to be fair, I I hadn't seen any of them. They just they look crappy. Um, it's a guy I don't even know what you're talking about. The, the Expendables, like they had. You don't like, need to explain it. No, they have a bunch of like those '80s action hero actors all in the same place, you know, and they shoot things, and it looks dumb, like Sylvester Stallone. And yeah, stuff. yeah. Uh, so let's move on to our last and final segment of this podcast, which we just want to talk briefly about kind of what's happening with the channel. Uh, and sort of some kind of dream plans of stuff that we want to work on. We haven't necessarily started yet, but kind of we're, we're thinking about. Yeah, I lots of lots of ideas, lots of potential things that we could work on. Um, Joe and I have been really busy lately, so that's kind of why the channel's been on a hiatus. Yeah. I mean, it's it barely got started to begin with, and and it's already we've already checked out. Yeah, I, it was just um, uh, but uh, yeah. So one of the th- what ideas you wanted to do a video about Metal Gear or something? Oh yeah, I mean, as I'm playing hundreds of hours of Metal Gear Solid Five, just an obscene amount of time, just sort of thinking about its world and its characters and its universe, and just thinking about in relation to its really troubled development history, I had sort of concocted a theory about what the story of that game was originally supposed to be. And the, the more I think about it, the more I'm convinced that... Uh, should I just say it here? Uh, a tease. Do a tease. Well... That Venom the... <laughs> um, is not so Venom after all yeah the the, i believe that essentially i believe that the twist ending to metal gear solid 5 okay there's a twist 
that's the it's that's the spoiler that there's a twist at the end but that twist was a last minute sort of scrambling sort of thing to tie up the game that was obviously not finished uh and that i believe that the the real twist was not shown uh in, in the game but i i believe i know what it uh, there was a there was a real twist that was supposed to happen that that didn't and i i think i can at least make a a a pretty good case for that being the case and and what what that twist was Mm -hmm. um and i i it i think i would have to start uh really taking some notes uh and we'd have to start working together with the video editing software um but i i think that's the the project i want to work on most and then you also you're you're an artist or something you know like photoshop i guess oh yeah so um i've (laughs) recently acquired a new computer uh that isn't 10 years old and uh i am want to start making some art videos of some some um what would you call it the uh like sped up versions yeah, uh, of you sped, drawing. Uh, uh, yeah, of me creating art. There's a there's a term for it. It's escaping me. Um, time lapse. Time lapse. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Um, You're welcome. Uh, a, t- a time lapse of me making some of my art, and uh, I, I think it could be entertaining. And I thought, like, once the time lapse is up, uh, Jacob and I could comment over the top about uh the process and uh what what it is that i do or why that i why i do what i do and how um could could be interesting uh hopefully to somebody yeah for those kind of weirdos who like that kind of stuff uh (laughs) um anyway uh and then sort of the thing that i've been planning is just kind of a video editorial kind of show 10 minute long little things about me talking about a really 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 small aspect of a game and sort of what I love about that aspect or what I don't like about that aspect and then you as the viewer could kind of draw your own like take a step back from that and look oh okay uh, you know it uh, like a final bossman rip yeah basically just a clone of that I would just probably go and watch Final Bossman episodes and then just use that same exact script that he used. But, like, just slot in a different game. It probably works just as well. Probably. (laughs) So that's kind of what I'm thinking. Like, for the intro, I'm thinking it would go one, two, three, four, and then on the fifth it would say the final Jacob or something like that. I don't know. Just working title. (laughs) (laughs) But... uh, that's kind of the hope. That's the dreams of the channel. That's what we're thinking about right now. So what, what game specifically are you thinking about starting with? Uh, well, I got a lot of games on my mind right now. What I'm thinking about a lot is Dragon Warrior 7 or Dragon Quest 7. So probably some stuff on that. Uh, or, you know, I'm also thinking about Oblivion. Or I'm thinking about even talking about... The, the video game Oblivion, not just No, death. I'm talking about death. Uh... You know, and, um, yeah, you know, just kind of talking about these sort of, you know, a, a quest and oblivion that I really love or uh, how protagonists work in video games, stuff like that. Yeah, compare and contrast. And you've talked to me about some of that uh, stuff. I, I think that that could be very, very good. Yeah, so uh, anyway, thank you for uh, sticking it out to the end and listening to us we really appreciate it uh we this is just up and starting thing obviously we're just using a pretty cheap mic and just doing this all at home and and it's it's for fun it is for fun and you know we try to make it we try to do what we like to do and this is just what joe and i talk about all the time and we just kind of got the idea hey throw up a mic and you can kind of join us with our conversations on stuff and here are weird insular dom opinions and how you know we how sort of 
uh, we don't understand other people. <laughs> we don't understand what people like or why people like some things. Or... Yeah. Uh, but the conversation is good. If, if you've listened to the end, you know, please do not hesitate to, um, like, leave a comment. If we've gotten anything wrong, please correct us. We uh, want corrections. because And two, if you're one of those weirdos who likes Dr- uh, Dark Souls 3 the best, like, tell us why. Yeah, I think so it's we can, an important... we can shoot you down next so, podcast. Yeah, so we can call you out and say you're stupid. Exactly. Or <laughs> so we can just get another view. We're uh, because... we're pretty open, guys. Right. We're not we're not angry. We're not gonna diss anybody because they think a certain thing. You know. Right. But with Jacob and I, we're kind of become this echo chamber because we don't really know other people who play video games like we do. Uh, so we just like are bouncing ideas off uh, each other like constantly, and it all sort of becomes garbled. I mean, it's like a game of telephone where by the end we're saying pure craziness that is just so dumb and so it's just so naive <laughs> that. Wait, you know, where? What are you doing? <laughs> what? Oh, I th- is this a bit? No, um, no, it's, I I mean, I'm convinced I'm right about things all the time, but like, that doesn't mean I am. No. And you know, Joe's, Joe's going to be a hard one to change his opinions on things, but I'm pretty open to other (laughs) thoughts. I'll be the bad cop. Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, I'm going to say in the interest of brevity, but (laughs) that's, (laughs) we've long missed that boat. Yeah. Um, I, it's time to sign off. Um, this has been Joe and Jacob with Carriage Play or Way or whatever podcast. And, uh, uh, we'd like to tell you to stay spiffy. Stay spiffy, everyone. <laughs>